Hi, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio, and today I'm going to introduce you to a wonderful foil finish that also incorporates glass bead gel. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing is um, we're going to be using metallic foils, which basically are a metallization that is on the back of a clear plastic, okay? So the color that you are seeing on this side is our bright silver, and that is the color that is gonna transfer. But the foil is actually on the back, okay? Um, so whenever working with foils, always try to make sure that the bright and shiny side is facing you or facing up when you're getting ready to actually install them. Uh, foiling is a two-step process. Uh, first, you have to apply a foil adhesive to the surface, and this is the sticky um, glue, basically, that transfers the foil to the surface. So no matter if you're working on a piece of furniture, you're working on cabinetry, or if you're actually going to work on a wall finish, um, the first thing you need to do is um, apply uh, this foil adhesive and this is our own brand here under Artsyville embellishments and it's just um, a foil adhesive and Once you apply this to the surface, you need to let it dry to a firm tack now. I'm just going to use um, Just a low nap um, Roller, okay, and I'm just applying full coverage And it goes on as you can see milky white and it will dry completely clear so you want to make sure you have a hundred percent coverage and then all of these marks that you're seeing can possibly um, telegraph through the layers of foil so always come back if you're using some kind of a roller and just make sure that you have, oh, I got a squeaky roller going here. This is fun. Um, make sure you have all of your um, roller marks going in one direction and try to eliminate any extra um, marks or anything that you could possibly um, eliminate so that you have just a nice um, smooth surface or as smooth as you can get it with um, nothing that's kind of like showing a pattern okay now this will completely dry clear and this is like um an overall like stippled effect that we're we would be getting here so this will be fine i just try to make sure i don't have roller marks going in a whole bunch of different directions because that could possibly um, telegraph through into our finish itself um, now you have to wait until the foil adhesive tacks up to what we call a firm tack and this is minimum of normally about 30 minutes. Um, if you're in a very humid area, you might even wait a little bit longer, okay? So you want to make sure you're waiting a minimum of maybe 30 to 45 minutes, but there's no maximum time um, that you can get beyond, okay? So the foil adhesive is never going to dry beyond a firm tack. So if we put this on today and we didn't come back to do our project till tomorrow, we would be fine, okay? There's not a window of opportunity, meaning it has to be dry for an hour, but you have to transfer within two or three hours, okay? Um, so even if you wait it a month from now, it's still going to be at that same dry tack. We are back with our um, sample board that the foil adhesive is completely dried to a firm tack. Um, it's completely clear, so our board looks black again. And just, if you want to test, if you can hear that, okay, that is a really, really good, hard, sticky, firm tack um, to go forward with on our project, okay? Um, at this point, we are just going to grab some of our foil. We're gonna be starting with our bright silver. And there are many different ways to actually install a foil finish, but I'm going to show you a pouncing technique today. So I'm going to take my foil and I'm going to wad it up into a ball, okay? And I have the out, oh, the, the back of it on the outside, okay? So the bright and shiny side is all um, on the inside of this ball that I'm creating. And we're just going to pounce it onto the surface. 
Okay, this is a noisy technique, so bear with me, okay? Let's move you over here so you can see a little bit better. So you'll have to keep moving the foil around to make sure that you have a section that still has foil left on it to transfer. And then keep turning it, okay, so that you make sure you have transferred all the foil off of this piece. And once you get to a point where there's really no foil left on there, just grab yourself a new piece, crinkle it up again, and continue to count. This gives you a very organic application versus just uh, applying the foil and transferring it um, as a full sheet. You get a lot of movement, a lot of interest, and that's why we have the black underneath. Okay, we keep looking at our foil to just try to find any section that still has um, some foil to transfer. And then I'm either going to do um, two different colors on here, okay? I know these look pretty similar, but this is our bright silver and this is our chrome. So the chrome is going to give us just a little bit of a color difference. So again, grab your foil, wad it up, <laughs> and transfer. Okay, and I'm still going to come back with another sheet of the um, silver, and I'm going to try to get not 100% coverage, but quite a bit of coverage, because we still have a lot of the black showing, and I want this to be more silver with just a tiny bit of the black showing in the finish, okay? So I'm going to continue to transfer. Okay, so we have this beautiful, ooh, look how nice, bright, and shiny that is. Okay, so we've got this beautiful foil finish, um, and it's very organic looking because of that application process. So we have little bits of black still showing through, but um, it's an overall really pretty um, way of just organic application to give that look, okay? Um, reminds me of a really beautiful faux finish that's really bright and shiny, okay? Um, so now I'm going to do um, a glass bead stencil, okay? So I'm taking a stencil design. This is our Hampton medallion pattern. And I'm going to place this wherever I want on here, okay? So wherever you want this design. And we're just going to do one repeat. So I'm just making sure that I... Hopefully have it straight, okay? And I've already put some spray adhesive on the back of the stencil. Um, so we use a product called Stick It, okay? And I lightly sprayed the back of the stencil so it would stay in position. And not only do I um, use the spray adhesive, okay? But if you don't have a really large margin before you're going to um, go over the edge of the stencil, um, I suggest doing a little bit of a tape border here so that I don't accidentally apply this product to the rest of the surface. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to mix up um, our glass bead gel with some black glitter. <laughs> fun stuff here, okay? okay? So I'm mixing up what should be enough to cover this stencil, okay? So a glass bead gel basically is a gel medium that looks milky white um, to start with, okay? But this will dry 100% um, clear, and there are some little glass beads in here as well. So when the medium dries, all you see is the glass bead. Um, let's see, I'm trying to gauge, okay, it's always a fun thing to kind of gauge sometimes of exactly how much product you're going to need, okay, looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more, I'm going to grab a little bit more of this, and then we're going to go ahead and get our glitter and add our glitter. 
Okay, so the, the easiest way that I have found to always add my um, glitter to my glass beads is to go ahead and use measuring spoons and that way if I need to make more at any point in time, I'll know exactly how much I've added. Um, we're probably about a half a cup of the, um, let me go ahead and move this so you can see. So we're at a half a cup of the glass bead gel and I want this to be pretty black, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add one to about one and a half tablespoons of the black glitter and mix this up and see if this is black enough for my project, okay? Because when I'm done, I just want a black glitter with a glass bead, okay? So I don't want it to look gray. I want it to be black enough that's really going to pop off of that foil background, okay, and bring the black background back up. So I think I'm going to go a little bit stronger. So right now, the recipe that I'm creating is probably going to be about four to five tablespoons per cup of glass bead gel. And any time that I'm mixing up um, a sample and I'm trying to determine what, it, what it's going to look like. Uh, one of my tricks that I've always done is take a little bit of the mixture and smear it out on top of the lid and let that completely dry because once it's dry it's going to tell you and give you an idea of is this going to be um, black enough for your project. So we're going to go for it and um, hopefully I have it as strong as I had hoped to make it, okay? We're going to bring you back up here so you can see the stencil. There we go. <laughs> okay, this is a um, another tool I want to introduce you to. It's called the Color Shaper. And this is a wonderful tool for applying glass beads because it allows them to be laid down nice and smooth. Um, there's no other tool that I'm aware of that um, will put the glass beads on so that they're not like uh, basically anything that's kind of plastic makes them want to pop and just uh, you end up uh, flinging them all over the place. So all you do is take this tool and just glide those glass beads over the openings. And like I said, this is not going to look like the color um, that it's going to dry because where that glass bead gel is milky white looking when it's wet, so it's making our, um, our bead gel look more gray right now, whereas when it dries, it will be black. So this is so easy to do, and you just want to lay it down to have like one thickness of the glass bead. You don't want it to have it too thick on here, um, because if it is... Um, thicker than like the thickness of the bead itself, um, it can start to haze. So you want to basically get the medium on so it's just uh, the thickness of the glass bead. Don't try to build it up thick and heavy. And then I just keep repositioning uh, the product on the edge of the color shaper tool because this allows you to glide it right over the stencil openings. So probably an eighth to a quarter of a cup would be all you would need to do one repeat and then um, just make sure you recapture any of the material that you can. Uh, when you're done, gently remove your tape. Where I didn't put, wasn't pushing this on here hard, okay, because that is our fresh um, foiled background, okay? So I was just barely putting the tape on there. And then bring your stencil off. Now anytime you use spray adhesive, it's going to want to stick, okay? So you're going to have to be careful as you're removing it. 
and get it started so you can start pulling out the rest of the design. There we go. And that is it. Okay, we've got a beautiful embossed pattern here. I'm going to be right back, okay? I'm going to show you the leftover, how to remove the leftover glass bead off of the stencil so you can recapture it. And that also, you don't put that down your drain, okay? Um, this is going to completely dry to where it will be black, and we will show you this um, dried sample at the end of the video. Okay, I wanted to show you how I clean off the stencil. So this is just a... Um, piece of packing paper or you could use any kind of unprinted newsprint but basically put it on some kind of clean paper surface and you can come back with your color shaper tool and just go ahead and remove all the excess material okay so that way you can recapture that and use it again and that also you're cleaning that off before it goes into your drain system okay this is glass beads and glitter so we want to make sure that we are recapturing all of it and putting it back in our jar so we can use it again and that's all you have to do so that's really it for cleaning it okay and then we'll make sure to show you the sample once it's completely dry thanks for joining us and make sure to check out our other videos here on our channel at artistic painting studio